what we want to do here at this point is look at the situation uh, with a linear regression when we have errors in the Y data. Okay, each individual um, measurement has its own uncertainty. And that's what these sigma i's represent. Each of these sigma i's represent the ith uncertainty on the dependent variable. Okay. So for example, if we come back to the data we had in Excel, and this is the data that we imported, um, if perchance my uncertainties generally get larger as my independent variable gets larger, and this um, can often happen in um, many different physical situations, this is nothing unusual, um, but the errors are not uniform right the the sigmas on each individual measurement are not uniform and as a result um, if I want to take these errors into account this is going to affect the overall result for the slope and the intercept okay it's going to affect these values it, they won't necessarily aff affect the R squared equation which we still have yet to, to, to uh, program. I'll show you guys how to do that in this video. But um, so as a preliminary um, step, okay, what I've done is I've commented the code so that way uh, if somebody were to read this they could see what I was doing. Here I'm importing my libraries. Um, here's the data, right? The um, x data is my independent variable y is my dependent variable and s is the sigmas and so this uh, set of numbers matches the um, values that we have here in Excel. N is the list of uh, or the number of measurements and then this is the algorithm. This produces the uh, model, um, the slope times our independent variable times the uh, or plus the intercept and then this calculates the variance um, and this calculates the sigma on the slope and this calculates the sigma on the intercept, right? And if I were really going to be very thorough with this, I would say that this uh, plots the data and dis plots and displays. Let's put it that way. Okay. So now I've, I've adjusted the algorithm for the um, slope and intercept, okay? So here's what the algorithm looks like. Um, the delta or the common factor that you can, uh, that appears in both the M and B equations looks like this. So before, we had n times the sum of uh, x squared, right? But here we're putting all of, uh, we, we basically have in the denominator of all of our terms, we have a sigma uh, squared, okay? So what this is telling you to do is take uh, your uh, zeroth x value and your zeroth sigma value, square both of those, and then sum up all of those results, right? So then do it for the first index and then do it for the second index and third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth, add everything up. And that's, that gives you this term, okay? And so as you can see, uh, if we look at one over sigma i squared summation, that's what this term is, uh, I, I should say factor. Okay, this is a factor. Um, and then you've got x squared over sigma squared and then summed up and that's what I have here. And then x divided by sigma squared summed up and then you square that. So x divided by sigma squared summed up and then the whole thing squared. So here's our delta term. The slope is given by this and so I've inserted the 1 over s squareds everywhere okay 
and I've done the same thing for the intercept. Now um, you'll notice, so I've rerun the program and the slope is now given by this and the intercept is given by this. The errors, the uncertainties on these are extremely small, much smaller than they were in the previous case, right? This is because I haven't updated these calculations yet. So that's what we will do now, okay? Um, and so I need to update these two equations. And so here we still have the square root, but this is going to be 1 over delta, okay? Um, so we're going to have 1 over delta. And then that's going to be multiplied by the sum of uh, 1 over the errors squared. So this is going to be times the sum of 1 over sigma squared. Right? Um, and for the uh, error on the intercept, um, this is again going to be 1 over delta. And we'll get rid of this. All right? Times, whoops. Times the sum of x squared divided by s squared. So this is going to be sum of x squared divided by s squared. And now this should give me the new um, values for the slope and the uh, intercept errors. Okay? So if we run everything now, what do we get? Okay, so those look a little bit more believable, right? Um, those are a little bit more akin to the errors we were getting here and here. But notice, okay, notice um, in this case, the slope, uh, the uncertainty on our slope, 0.037, um, is actually a little bit smaller than the uncertainty on um, the slope without errors, okay? So this is a bit of an anomaly. Most often this will tend to increase these errors because your error bars um, put even more scatter into your data in general, okay? Um, but it also depends on how they're weighted and it depends on their um, pat patterns within um, the data itself and things like that. So um, it's not too much of a surprise, but we have a slope of 1.24, essentially 1.25. Here the slope is 1.19, not terribly different from each other. Um, and the uncertainty on that is 0 0.03. And so this could be anywhere between 1.16. Um, actually, technically, it's uh, if we're going to go to two decimals, it's 0 0.04. So it could be anywhere between 1.15 and 1.23, uh, right? And this is 1.25, and that could be anywhere between 1.20 and 1.30 if we round to two decimal places here. So the slopes overlap, right? They're, the uncertainties in our slopes uh, overlap with these two methods. And that, that should give you some relative confidence that this is working appropriately because um, unless your error bars are just wildly large, if you have a set of really messy data and your error bars are just wildly large, then these should not be too far away from each other. And again, um, the intercept is 1.0 in the non-error case, um, and it's uh, 0.96 here, which is really good, right? Uh, that, that agrees. And so that should help give you some confidence that your algorithm is working appropriately. Um, 
but you'll notice, right? Notice, notice one thing. Um, if I enlarge this plot and look at how this trend line is behaving, there are some fundamental differences between this and the trend line without errors, right? So first things first, notice that this particular uh, point where it uh, looks to be on the trend and this particular point, so the second to last and third to last points, and here um, the third to last point is actually slightly above the trend, right? Where here it's slightly below, and here it is uh, well above the trend and here it, the, at least the dot almost looks like um, it's hitting the line now that could be just a, a perspective thing that the you know um, size of the dot is is um, large enough if we decrease the marker size then that would um, change things but overall there are a few subtle differences between um, the the slope here and the slope here right um, so so there you have it now um, what about the r squared value how do we calculate that whoops so the r squared value is calculated This is, the, this is the quick method, right? So this is what we'll do in the next video. I'll show you guys how to do this in the next video. Um, but your R value or your co correlation coefficient is this, okay? So, you know, actually, as a matter of fact, what I might do is, is leave that as an exercise. Um, yeah, I think that that'll be a really good exercise. So we'll we'll leave that as an exercise. Um, and so actually, I think I think we can go ahead and leave this video as is. Right? I think we'll go ahead and leave this video as is, um, and we'll leave the course coefficient as an exercise and then in the next video I'll show you guys how to do the linear regression the easy way now this um, method I'm about to show gives you the same result as when you don't take errors in your individual dependent values into account so if all of these were uniform and by the way Okay, you can you can also prove to yourself that um, if these are uniform, this reduces to what we got before, and this is actually this is probably a really good check that um, the algorithm is correct. So this is what we mean by uniform errors. If all of these are the same, and by the way, it would not matter. You could put any number in here as long as they were all the same. And let's see what this gives us. And there you have it. Okay, The slope and the intercept are the same as what we get here. Okay, now the slope here is um, uh, this is the computational rounding that I've mentioned before, right? This is this is computational rounding, but effectively, almost everybody on the planet would agree that point nine 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 eight one is really really close to one. Right now, the uncertainties on on these are slightly different. All right, and that's because um, the the way these two calculations work. But the values for the slope and the intercept are the same when you have uniform errors here. Okay, and and by the way, just just as a check, what if these are different? Do we still get effectively the same values?
and 